Welcome back from that last short commercial break. My name is Privy Buzz. It's time for our views, the final segment of our show. Of course, uh, we do talk about issues that are pertinent to our daily lives. And uh, today we have a very interesting topic, very juicy topic. But before I get into that, um, let me introduce the ladies that are joining me today in studio. We have Agi Uwase and we also have Shifa Naoma. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? It's, it's a bright, it's a bright um, Thursday morning. Too hot. Too, uh, kind of hot for the morning, yeah. I understand. <laughs> but either way, we'll have to, you know, um, carry We've this We've been complaining about before. the cold. Now we are complaining about, you know, it being hot. Make up, what like we should make our make minds up. up. Yeah, make it should be normal up. weather. What like we a bit of coldness, <laughs> a bit of sunshine at the same time, but not too much. Like a shivan weather, low key. Uh -huh. Strike a balance. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, ladies, today we're going to be looking at um, uh, healthy relationships, yes? I mean, like, as adults, we've been um, in relationships, several relationships, if I should put it that way, because I feel like the average uh, normal human being starts dating, at least at the age of um, 18 years. Yes, the average, the average. I mean, like, you guys come from strict homes and all that, and your parents are <laughs> letting you know you cannot have a, bo a boyfriend or you cannot have a girlfriend, but actually in other, you know, uh, jurisdictions, people are free to you know start mm. relating if you mean as early as 16 and 14 and all that but i'm going to bring the conversation you know back to um adulthood and all that healthy relationships we all have been in uh, relationships but do we actually understand if we're in healthy relationships or if we're just you know like taking a gamble when it comes to the matters of love because you you realize that um a healthy relationship defining it uh it varies from a person to person it's very uh, subjective it's not objective so uh, it, it, it differs on how I would define a healthy relationship. It would differ on what Shivan you know, would use to define a healthy relationship as what as Aggie would say uh, to uh, define a healthy relationship. We also know that what might appear like a healthy relationship to you at uh, 20 years of age is probably going to be different down the road at 25. Or even your 25-year-old self will be, you know, um, w when you look back at, year, at your 25-year-old relationship at 30 years, you probably, you know, one different for yourself. But if we are to, you know, uh, basically define it or, you know, uh, give us a few tips of, you know, uh, what involve healthy relationships, we have a bit of um, honesty, we have the aspect of truth, uh, we have uh, the aspect of respect, we have the aspect of uh, open communication between partners, and we also have uh, the aspect of uh, compromising. You know, we all, we, people say in a relationship you have to compromise one or another because no one is perfect. Mm -hmm. But um, the very first question that I want to pose to you ladies, what's your ideal type of, you know, healthy relationship? Because I mean, even some people say polygamous relationships are very healthy. So I'd love to, you know, understand your take on uh, healthy relationships and what you think um, is the ideal type. Well, like what you've already pointed out, like you said, when it comes to healthy relationship, it could vary from person to person. Yes. However, there are those basics, like truth, honesty, loyalty. For me, one is communication. <laughs> communication is the quality time, which is my love language. <laughs> And I guess I would say at the age of 25, it's safe to say that I don't think I've been in a healthy relationship. Because when I look back, I was just wasting time, actually. Like, <laughs> we were both wasting time. We both agreed we were both wasting time with my partner. Mm -hmm. So I would say, when it comes to the aspect of healthy relationships, there needs to be commitment, there needs to be communication, there needs to be honesty, compromise, but again, in a healthy way, in not a, a toxic manner. way. It needs to be two-way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. yes again. Um, well, for me, there are quite a number of things, but one of them, I will say, um, honest communication. Yes. Thorough communication at that. Let me be in the know of whatever is happening in your life. And in this relationship, the both of us, yes. I don't like a relationship where communication is lacking. That's where I'm on the other end. I'm like, you know what? I don't think this is going to work out. The other thing, I think that's very important is respect. Yes. Now, you don't want to be in a relationship with someone who doesn't respect you. And by the way, I think every other thing falls in line after respect because when someone respects you, they will not do anything that they know for sure puts you off. If they respect you, they'll not be out there humiliating you and cheating right, left, and center. Mm -hmm. If someone respects you, they will do all the good things to make you happy. And um, the other thing that... I really think is very important for me to have a, a healthy relationship with someone. It has to be support. Well, back in the day, I couldn't care less about it because I didn't think it was that important. But yeah. right now, I need a partner who supports my dreams, who supports, you know, uh, my ambitions, my careers. Yeah, and who also, yes, my wallet. Oh, wallet. yeah. Let's wallet not ignore well. this well. thing. <laughs> How could I even forget that? <laughs> I mean, it's if I'm key. lagging financially, you have to be there. I mean, I have to count on you <laughs> in yeah. whatever I need. But anyway, um, 
again i would i've already said respect um communication um be, being supportive to your partner are very important for a healthy relationship and the other thing oh god i almost forgot a healthy relationship means when you are truly yourself with your significant other i have been in a relationship when I was, where i was never myself and that is the reason why i ended it because i felt I was pretending to, to be, be someone, someone who wants. I wasn't mm -hmm. because I was trying to put on a show or feel acceptable. So yeah, be who you are in that relationship. That's a healthy relationship. Well, I think for me, uh, my ideal type of relationship, number one, it has to have honesty. Honesty is always the best uh, policy. And I always, uh, I mean, we've had numerous conversations about cheating and all that. And I always ask you, like, Aggie, if a person is going to cheat on you, honestly, why can't they just come out and say, you know what, I'm feeling someone else. I don't think this is going to work out. However, it might actually work out, but I feel like I need to go and be with this other person for, you know, just to feel it out and, you know, see how it, <laughs> how it goes. I feel like for me there, you've given someone an opportunity or a chance to say, you know what, <clears throat> he has been honest. He wants to go and sleep with this person. Mm. Uh, all my cards are on the table. If I decide to stay, at least he was honest enough. Mm -hmm. If, you know, but if you don't tell someone what you're actually going to do, when you're, what you're up to, then you're not giving them a chance to be, um, to, to choose the right thing that is good for themselves. So for yeah. me, honesty, I'm big on honesty as well. And then I'm also big on loyalty. I know it's a very, I'm asking for too much, yes? No, 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 you're not. I'm probably asking, asking for too asking much. You're not asking for too much, you're asking for enough. What I'm probably asking, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that you're you You're asking for the, what, you did, what you owed to get. I don't like the idea whereby when we present our key things that should be in a relationship, all of a sudden where women are told you're being too much. No, we're not being too much. We're, we're, not, asking, we're asking for exactly what the we deserve minimum. to get. Exactly. Yeah, if anything, mm -hmm. the, the bare minimum. minimum. Yes. yes, I'm big on loyalty as mm -hmm. well. There's no reason as to why you shouldn't be loyal to the person you claim to love. It's like simple, simple science, simple knowledge. Yeah. Then I'm also uh, big on the issue of respect as well. You have to respect your partner. You have to respect your partner. If you do not respect your partner, these are the things that we, you know, discuss and talk about all the time. Cheating, doing this and that and all and that. But okay, we, I, I feel like in our preamble, and I know we are driving this conversation based on the, you know, the issue of time, but we've already highlighted on the characteristics of, you know, what would entail a healthy relationship. But what are those things uh, that could be healthy habits in a relationship, but we somehow consider toxic? Healthy habits that we could so somehow consider, consider toxic. Yeah, yes. Toxic. I'll give you an example. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You re you realize like as uh, as people in uh, in relationships, you always want to be next to your partner all the time. But what that happens, yeah. it shifts from you being you know uh, codependent or in, or like you know interdependent on like one to another needy. to being uh, to losing your relationship. Um, you, we talked about yes. that relationship identity, yes? yes. Yeah. You lose your identity in the relationship, so you find like everything revolves around your partner. I mean, it's good to spend time with your partner, yes. but the end, the, the end game is that, you know... Um, that, that, that does actually make sense because when you bring it in the aspect of communication, I mean, we all like a man or a woman who will call up and say, hey, babe, have you had lunch? Are you okay? But again, it's healthy, but it can get toxic because then I'm looking at it, are you... Do you honestly and genuinely want to find out where I am, how I'm doing, with whom I am, or are you doing it to police me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. You, you get. So in a way, it can. It's a healthy habit to constantly keep in communication, but it becomes toxic if the other party is doing it from an aspect that they're trying to control you and find out yeah. your whereabouts. Your yeah, whereabouts. Yes. Um, I, mean. I would say one of them is. I mean, there's people whose love language is acts of service. Is it acts of service? Yeah. yeah. This includes your partner taking care of you. You know, buying you all these beautiful gifts and giving you all the money that you that you want, especially if you're a lady. But it can get toxic if you expect, you know, your partner to be the one that does all the beautiful things for you, to take mm. you out on a date, to surprise you on your birthday, to throw, you know, those amazing, you know, birthday, I don't know, parties for you. And yet in return, you don't want to do it because you feel you are entitled to their to money. Their you are entitled to them, you know, love. <laughs> taking care of you as good as you want to be taken care of. So it can get toxic and it can also feel one-sided because this energy needs to be reciprocated. It has to go both ways. But then again, I think it also comes back to the issue of understanding, knowing probably who earns more, who earns less, and also how to bring your finances together 
but i think this means you should be with someone who loves you and someone who really likes you actually not loves you someone who really likes you because if someone really likes you then they'll be able to do these things for you even sometimes when they don't expect you to do um something for them shivan talked about the issue of communication overly communicating to your partner sometimes they need time yeah they to need themselves. time to themselves if your love language is quality time you don't expect to be under my jacket every minute i have a life outside the relationship mm -hmm. i have friends i have work if i I'm at work let me be at work why are you trying to keep tabs on me what i'm doing and where i'm going if yeah. i'm saying i am with my friends and i am with my friends that goes back to the issue of trust and if there's no trust in the relationship that is as good as gone okay well here are some of you know the healthy relationships uh, uh, relationships habits that people mostly think are toxic but are actually very healthy number one letting some conflicts go unresolved People say mm -hmm. that um, the idea that couples must communicate and resolve all their issues there and then is actually very, is much more of like a myth. There's some things that you'll have to let go for the sake of, you know, building a healthy uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. not, not that, you know, uh, it's mm -hmm. not going to affect your relationship in one or another, but maybe sometimes you're, you know, insisting on one thing that should be resolved and it ends up, you know, creating more problems than it's actually um, solving. The other bit is being willing to hurt each other's feelings. There's also that as passive well. Passive aggressive behavior. It's not really passive aggressive <laughs> behavior per se, but um, you know, it's important that uh, if I go to the makeup room, maybe let's say I'm working on my makeup mm. and I'm done and I come out of, uh, maybe, uh, sorry, I come, I come out to my husband or to my man and I'm asking, how do I look? And they're honest enough and they tell me, Priva, no, 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 you, you, you did quite a, a bad job. You need to go and, you know, adjust this and this and, and that. But because crazy. I expect my partner to be kind, because I expect mm -hmm. him to always say the nice things about me, that could, that could hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. But at least it comes at the expense of honesty. Why should I, you know, not uh, receive the honest truth from my husband if we are actually in a healthy relationship? Yeah. So, yeah, sometimes uh, being able to hurt each other's feelings, it's part of, you know, being in a healthy relationship. It's okay and it's allowed. Then there's also the issue of uh, being willing uh, to end uh, a relationship. You know, sometimes we get into relationships and we make it part of our identity. We've all had friends who have gotten into relationships and just magically you disappeared. never hear from them again. <laughs> they just disappeared. They used to, you know, love singing. They're no longer going for the choir lessons. They used to um, love piano. They no longer go for the piano lessons. You have your boyfriend. He used to play basketball. He used to play football. But now he misses out on practice all because mm -hmm. he got into um, a new relationship. But if you're in a relationship and uh, it's independent of you as a person, you keep in mind, like, at the end of the day, if, it is, if it's going to get to a point where it's not serving me, I have the option of doing what? Of leaving. It's a healthy habit for always keeping an open mind in your relationship that anything could, you know, um, go wrong. Then we also have uh, the, the, the bit of feeling attraction for other people outside the relationship. Feeling attracted to other people outside the relationship could also be um, a good thing. Now, it's a good thing to uh, a certain extent. I mean, it, we, are, we are human beings. You could be in love with your man, but it doesn't stop you from appreciating another man that has, you know, passed by or thinking that man is it's handsome or he, not necessarily better than yours because the moment you get to talk to those people, then you realize they also have the demons that they are fighting. Yes. So it, the simple attraction, yes, even if it's physical, even if it's sexual and all that, if that attraction is there, it's okay. But what is not okay is your actions or you planning to act on it. If you plan to act on your, yeah, then it becomes a problem. So, you know, feel it out, understand it, be like, oh, yeah, I find that person attractive and that's it. Don't feel guilty because you're in a relationship with um, um, someone else. It's okay. Admire your person and uh, keep it moving. Then we have uh, the beat. <coughs> Yes, just don't make sure I don't act on it because, yeah, yeah but also don't suppress it. But one it. thing leads to another. It, it starts from admi admiration and if this person approaches you in any way, I mean, you'll start, you'll exchange numbers, start communicating before you know it. Come on. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that, you know, you should act on it and, you know, accept it as something that is happening because also if you refuse to um, you accept it, then you become a passive aggressive. You find yourself asking your partner weird questions like, remember how we used to be so much in love? <laughs> like you're considering another idea of, you know, someone else taking up your partner's, you know, uh, yeah. position, but in actual sense, it's just mm. the same people. So, you know, fill out your attraction to other people, but just do not act on it. Your actions uh, will speak volumes. And then you guys also talked about the issue of, you know, spending time apart. We all cannot be in the same space with people or the, with our partners all the time. 
you know, uh, someone was telling me uh, he, uh, he had to go for uh, a road trip with his friends and uh, the girlfriend actually installed the GPS tracker to just make sure she's part of the party that day. So Very that's imagine. crazy. I mean, you love your that's partner. psychopath. Yeah, you yeah. love your partner, but allow them to be, you know, by themselves and, you know, spend time. So ladies, uh, the final bit that I have to say is accepting your partner's flaws. It's also a healthy mm. uh, thing. I know in the, in the initial beginning, what will bring you together is, you know, the things that you find attractive about each other, the things you love about each other. But what will make you stay? is if you can actually actually handle your um, significant other's uh, flaws. Oh. So dear people, beautiful <laughs> ladies, in the final two, two seconds, your final uh, remarks as we wrap up the, the show. Well, my, my parting shots would be, do not settle for less. Let no one tell you anything less than, mm, you do not deserve better. Yes, you actually do deserve better. But also to the ladies out there, apart from facial beauty, what else do you have to offer? So and work that, on yourself so that man. you're not <laughs> being no, it's important because that is that is why men that is why men walk all over in ma in some marriages in some relationships men walk all over women because uh, they have nothing they bring to the table so add value to yourself oh yes yes again um well for me i'll second. say be very intentional to be in healthy relationships because they are good for your mental and they are good for your well-being avoid toxic relationships at all costs well what i'll have to say if you must Stay away from a relationship if it's not serving you at the end of it all. Mm. Like, put yourself first. Ask yourself what you actually want out of a healthy relationship and make sure that relationship you're in, your needs are met. Whether they're financial, whether they're physical, whatever, make sure at least, you know, uh, your needs are met and you're not just settling for the sake of um, settling in a relationship. So, I wish you the best of luck as, you know, go out there and, you know, maneuver your relationships. But most importantly, I hope you can maintain and uh, protect your healthy relationships. We need more of that. You can and stay in love. You like good... Good loving. Good loving. So <laughs> you love good loving. Well, that's all we had for you this morning on our views. Uh, yes, you can let us know what you think about this particular conversation. So, you know, tweet us on Twitter, head over to our Facebook as well at CTV Uganda, or, you know, DM us on Instagram at CTV um, Uganda. We'll definitely love to hear from you. So make sure you do share your thoughts with us. My name is Privili Baz. Good morning. We've come to the end of Sunrise at Sea this morning. It's a beautiful and bright Thursday morning. We've had great conversations earlier. We talk, uh, were talking about managing the Ebola outbreak in Uganda. And uh, I had two gentlemen that I sat with in the Twitter jabs too, from the Uganda Medical Association as well as uh, U the Uganda Interns Association. Yes, that's what it was. And yes, they raised a number of concerns uh, to the Ministry of Health in regard to mitigating and controlling the Ebola outbreak in Uganda. So I hope the Ministry of Health and all um, um, the Ministry of Health takes um, note of those concerns. And yes, we winded up the show with a conversation on happy relationships. I couldn't re-echo anything that the ladies said, so take note of each and every advice that they have given you. That is all we had for you this morning. Have a good day. Well, well, Angie, yes, uh, I still was trying to cue you in uh, to, you know, a lot of our viewers that is actually Yala elections that are happening. Mm. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Thursday. 29th of September, mm. 2022. So yes, look out for that as well. But we'll be bringing to you um, everything that transpires in regard to the Iyala elections at Parliament. That is all we had for you. Have a good day. Mm.